Okay, everybody, uh, welcome to another tutorial from Chapter 7 in the Revit Structures 2019 Fundamentals book. And we're going to talk about adding trusses. So if you have a book, this is on 7-38. All right, so a truss can be added to a project using the same basic method as a placing a beam. So just think of these things sort of the way that beams work. These work the same way in terms of placing them. Uh, trusses are typically comprised of one or more triangular sections, as you can see right here. Uh, this portion is called the web members. And uh, these sections are constructed with uh, structural members whose ends are connected at joints, uh, which are referred to as nodes. Uh, as various forces act on these nodes, the triangular shape provides structural stability to prevent the bending. So that's this middle web area right here, okay? Uh, you have the bottom cord, so that's the lower horizontal member, and then the top cord, which is the upper horizontal member. And then the web is the series of structural framing elements that can stabilize the truss. Okay, so let's get into how to actually add one. All right, so here in Revit, you can see that I have a structural um, <clears throat> file here, which is Syracuse Suites Trusses.rvt. If you've done any downloading, you'll see, you can find this exact file, which already has some of these trusses preloaded in here, the Pratt and the Howie. All right, so for mine, um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this truss right here. I'm just gonna select and delete it so that way we can start from scratch. Uh, you may need to turn on your roofs in your visibility graphics here as they could be turned off in your file, okay? All right, so um, what you're gonna do first is you'll need a plan view and a section view. I went ahead and pre-did myself a section view and a plan view to include what I wanted to see. And my section currently looks like this. I do have some supports right here, which I'm going to be having that truss uh, rest itself on. Okay, so I'm gonna draw in plan so that way I know exactly where I wanna put it. The way you get your truss is you're gonna go ahead and come up here to structure tab, hit the truss button. And then if you don't have the trusses you need, you can go ahead and load them in from the library. And that would be down here under structural trusses. And then you have a plethora of trusses to go ahead and choose from, okay? Uh, the ones that I like are the Pratt trusses because they can go ahead and attach up underneath the roofs and take on the shape of the roof, okay? So that's the one we're gonna be using here today. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw in our truss right here from this support over here to this support. And click and it'll go ahead and generate it. And as you can see, it generated a flat truss custom line just to let me know that, hey, this is where um, it's happening at. Now, I just switched those back to zeros because I had did this previously and so it was at zero to start with. And I want you to see it as it comes in and what that's going to look like. So let's go ahead and go to that view. All right, as you can see, it did not bring it in on a level. Um, it, actually, it did, but it did it to the top one. And that's because this bearing cord is set to top. Now, what we want to do is set that bearing cord to bottom and it's going to pull it up. Now, something that Revit uh, does not do for some reason is that it does not set it on top of the item that you're bearing on. It puts in an offset here. So I know that it's two and a half inches from the bottom of this uh, member right here. And this member, it happens to be an L angle, and then this member happens to be a wide flange, okay? So um, you can try to utilize the, a line, but as you can see, it doesn't want to find the bottom of that truss to let you pull it down. So you have to go ahead and figure out that dimension right there and see that, oh, okay, it's one and a half inches. So go ahead and grab that guy, type in a negative one and a half inches. All right, put it in the start level and then also put it in the end level because we don't want to have it um, uh, cockeyed, all right? So then uh, once you got that in here, notice that it is right there. So things that we might wanna do with this truss is that uh, the truss height, just don't worry about that. Uh, it will uh, grow and stretch and fit the shape that you need. And then um, down here, you can figure out how far apart you need your panels to be. Um, just to show you a change, I'm gonna put in eight feet. And as you see, those webs had gone further apart now by me doing that, okay? 
Um, let me see here. You can also, when you want to uh, put these in here, uh, you do have an opportunity to still edit the profiles. Even if you wanted to, um, it's not always necessary, uh, especially with this particular type of truss, it wants to let you attach it into that shape, okay? So don't worry about that right now. Now, if you don't like what members are actually inside of this truss, you can go ahead and um, <clears throat> edit them. Now, if your uh, flyout panel for the preview wasn't open, you can do that by hitting that button. Do a little bit of a zoom, and you can notice here that there are some colors here. So remember I told you that we had a top cord of vertical uh, webs, and then we got some diagonal webs, and then we have some bottom cords in here. Okay, so uh, there's a structural framing type under the magenta is our top cords. Our vertical webs are these black ones here, and our diagonal are the green, and then your bottom cords are the blue. So you can go ahead into their framing types, and you can pick what types of families you want loaded there, okay? And it's based on whatever beams or bars you have loaded in, okay? So if you're okay with that, as I am, I'm going to just hit okay. If I had made changes, uh, in this case, I'm going to hit cancel because it's good to go. All right, so uh, at this point, what I need to do is just simply attach this truss to the bottom of this roof. A truss and or bottom cord profile is ignored when the truss is attached to a roof or structure floor. Okay. All right, here it goes, and it's going to do the math, and there it goes. It made the attachment as it thinks it should go. All right, uh, that's it for how to touch that, and you can see kind of what that looks like again here in 3D. All right, now you are attached to the Nugget implant. If you felt like that was in the wrong location, you can draw your dimensions and align them um, to move them up and down as need be. To add on to the um, attaching uh, trusses to roofs, uh, things you should know is that uh, trusses can uh, be attached to roofs or floor slabs. Uh, they can also follow the slope of the roof and automatically extend to fit. All right, as you can see, uh, that happened here, right? <clears throat> Uh, things you should also know is that uh, the top cord must be one continuous line in the family. So the top cord is uh, this guy right here, right? It looks broken because of the way it's attached right now based on its uh, spacing. So if I put that a nicer number, it will behave a little bit better. Well, I lied. So that <laughs> that's the way Revit wants to attach it, okay? So that top cord has to be continuous. Uh, if it's broken into segments, attaching it might not work properly. So verify that the bottom cord is specified as the bearing cord in the element properties of the truss. Uh, this will ensure that the roof loads are carried throughout the truss appropriately. Okay. Bottom cord down here. Okay, and that it's always the bottom. All right, uh, let me see here. Bearing cord is, oh, you can actually choose bottom here. Let me see if we choose top. Back in our section, if it's gonna set it back down where I wanted it to go to begin with. And I could, select that guy. Okay, so if I move this guy up one and a half inches right now, then it should have been like we wanted to without the adjustment earlier. Oh, well, in a way it does, but it, it's still missing that difference right there. So even though I've got it at a zero, I still will need to put it down to at least a half an inch lower than what it was, okay? One slash two inch. And that way I've got it setting on top of this beam. Okay. Now, um, let's see. Uh, if the roof or floor slab does not cover the length of the truss, 
an error message will open um, and you might have to detach the truss, okay? So just make sure that the roof itself is actually bigger or is in the same length on its overhang as the truss is, otherwise you'll get an error. <clears throat> uh, so by the way, when you're working inside of the truss type, then um, when working in the truss families, um, when they're created, they can handle structural framing members of the cords and webs. So, however, they often just use default members. Therefore, you need to specify the precise framing type that you want to use in the project. So I know I'm kind of reiterating that, but I just want to make sure that you hear this right. Uh, in the type properties of dialog box, you can select the structural framing from a list of drop downs in the families that are loaded into the project. Um, to select an entire truss, you can ensure that the dashed lines are displayed when you're doing a selection of the truss. So notice that all of my blue kind of dashed lines show up when I hover, right? And so I know I've gotten a hold of it also. Um, let me see here. To select one of the individual elements in the, the truss, you can do that. Um, the way you do that is to go ahead and tab until you get a hold of the one element. Okay, so the individual trust members are pinned to the trust framework. If you want to modify it, yeah, you got to click the unpin and then you prevent the allowing of uh, changing of the elements position. Okay, uh, there's rotation angles and whatnot of the entire truss. Um, once you unpin that, you'll see that some of these options then become available to you, such as cross rotation, some cutbacks, and whatnot. Um, so if I grab this whole truss right here too, is that um, you don't get any of this rotation angles and whatnot because that wasn't done uh, right here now. It has to be done while it's being um, created or placed. All right, so what that might mean is that maybe if you turn it this way and maybe this truss is running perpendicular to this roof instead of uh, with it, then uh, you might have to angle maybe the top cord or the bottom cord and then let, and maybe, maybe these uh, web actually has a bend angle in it or something like that, okay? So you, you can remember just that you can rotate the trusses and specifically if the cords rotate with the truss uh, in properties, type in rotation angle and then select or clear the rotate cords with uh, truss, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, that's uh, on this area right here. Uh, again, like because this this guy is actually been done, you want to do this during the court, uh, the creation of it, so that way you can uncheck that. Okay. All right, that's all I got, guys.